revive us after two days. On the third day, he will raise us up to live in his presence. Let us know, let us strive to know the Lord, as certain as the dawn is coming and his judgment shines forth like the light of day. He will come to us like rain, like spring rain that waters the earth. What can I do with you, Ephraim? What can I do with you, Judah? Your piety is like a morning cloud, like the dew that early passes away. For this reason, I smote them through the prophets. I slew them by the words of my mouth. For it is love that I desire, not sacrifice, and knowledge of God rather than burnt offerings. The word of the Lord. Thank you. It is happening. You know, uh, uh, you know as I had mentioned to you, the, the amount of abortion clinics that are closing, uh, there was tw when we started 20 years ago, there were 2,200 abortion clinics in the United States. It's now down to 700. As a matter of fact, when, when I went to Phoenix, Arizona, they, they asked me to come because they wanted to close another clinic. Uh, we have a perfect record there. It was the fifth time I've gone, and the previous four clinics closed. They wanted to, to close this one, too. Um, so the people are, are doing marvelous things, and I just would emphasize that to you. There is an encyclical that uh, our present Holy Father Benedict XVI wrote, and he issued it on the, the end of the year of, of, of the Apostle Paul, which ended in the Feast of the Apostle Peter and Paul on, in June 29th, 19, uh, 2009. And it was called uh, Caritas in Veritate. Caritas in Veritate. A charity in truth. It's worth reading. But he wrote that encyclical because he was reflecting on a document that was produced by, by Paul VI. Pope Paul VI. It was called Populorum Progressio, uh, Developments of Peoples. And he produced that document in, in, in 1967. 1967. And in it, he, he, talk, he talked about we are either going to have a, a, a development that involves a human Christian humanism, or we're going to have a development that will involve an inhumane humanism. And the inhumane humanism will give us a culture of death. The man was prophetic. Even in Omani Vitae, when he said, if you reject my teaching in regards to God saying not delib to deliberately separate the act of love and sexuality from life and God, and, and if you deliberately separate that, and you don't do what I'm asking you, these things will happen to you. And it was section 17 in that encyclical, read it. He prophesied. And when he prophesied in 1968, this is 2010. Everything has happened. He's right on target. He truly was a holy man. Now Benedict XVI refers to Paul VI as the great Paul VI, which he was. And so it was in the year, the year before he issued the Mani Vitae, he issued the great encyclical, The Developments of People. And it talked about, we're going to either have true development that takes into account the spirituality of a person, both spirit and soul, and develop the whole person, or we're going to have a development that takes into account only the body. It's going to become a real contrast between two radical visions of the world. One that believes in God, in transcendence, in the spirit, in the value of every single person, and the respect that must be given to them. And another that will involve a type of turning in on oneself, imminence, disregarding of God, forgetting that man is a spirit and a soul, treating him like an animal, and which man will be the one who will resolve and, and create a wonderful, great, beautiful new world by himself. And that's what you have right to this very day. And so it was that on the 40th anniversary of that encyclical, our present Holy Father, reflecting on that encyclical, decided to write a, a, a 40th anniversary encyclical based on that. He started two years ago, and he ended up on, I said, June 29th, 2009. 
2009, and he produced the encyclical called Caritas in Veritate, Charity in Truth. And that is the document you know he gave to President Obama when he went to see him. And he himself had, had produced a document called Donum Vitae, the gift of life. He produced that document. It was, it was published on, on February 22nd, 1987. And, and the gift of life was a, a continuation of really the teachings of Paul VI and Amani Vitae. And Paul VI and Amani Vitae say, said, we must not deliber deliberately shut out God and life in the act of love and sexuality. Otherwise, we will reduce humanity to something lower than any, low and, destruct and destructive of it. And what happened was we did. And so the same technology that enabled us to separate the act of love and sexuality from life and to make the purpose of sex pleasure rather than the purpose of sex be an act of I love you and you love me and out of this love comes a child with the help of God creating the soul, it became an end in itself, pleasure. And once we did that, we could no longer argue against homosexuality. Impossible. On what basis could you argue against homosexuality? If there's no order, no plan, no design, we all must conform to. We used to say it was a disorder. You love the person, but it's a disorder. And like everyone else, he has to struggle with that. Another person has to struggle with addiction to alcohol, to drugs, to fornication, adultery, all those, sodomy, is, these are all disorders that are disorders what? from the order that God created, the plan that God made. Okay? And when we lose that sense, well then you can't argue against anything. And so you start to take everything out of the law, all these values. And so it was that the same technology that separated the act of sexuality and love from life, by 1987, they are well on their way now. Because once you d d say there's no order, you destroy family, destroy the purpose of sex. Well now, if you can have sex and love without life, well they said, why cannot we have life without love and sexuality? And so we began the beginning of the growing of life in the laboratories, separated from God, separated from human love, separated from the point of anyone even caring, caring that they're there. And the barbarian things that are taking place in the, um, and we all start off with a wonderful thing. We're trying to help a woman who can't conceive to conceive in vitro fertilization. Isn't that wonderful? But do you really understand what it is?